Huh? No. I'm going to San Antonio soon, though, so I'll be able to get it. No, I don't like it that much. <laughs> we'll just learn how to do uh, the honey butter or wherever they get it from, and then I'll be good. I wouldn't need the store anymore. Hey, De'Aaron. Um, you've had a, a couple of hours here to process. Just where are you at coming out of the series? How proud are you for just not only your own success here, but the, the success of your team throughout this season and, and through seven games of crazy playoffs? I'm extremely proud of this group. Um, I feel like we got better through the course of the year. Um, obviously, we struggled uh, at the beginning, but and we had our struggles throughout the course of the year. But I think just as a team, we continued to grow and got better. Um, I mean, it was a remarkable season for us, obviously, with, with where we have been in the past, uh, especially like for myself individually, um, just being a part of this organization, just seeing where we came from. Uh, this is a big step in the right direction. Darren, two for you. One, uh, how quickly do you think you'll get your finger operated on? Uh, no, no, I, I don't have to get surgery. Um, I actually got an x-ray right after the game yesterday for like our closing uh, medical. And they say like two or three weeks, it should be fully healed. Um, I should wear a splint, which I don't have right now, but like there should be no risk of getting hit right now. Uh, so I should be fine. Two to three weeks, I should be good to go. And the second one for you, to, to do this this season in front of Rasay and Rain, just especially courtside, just personally, what has that meant to you and how much have they kind of maybe helped you in your development on, on the court? Oh, it's big. Uh, just having, you know, your your family there um, every single game. Uh, I mean, Rasay helps me in, in my development both on and off the court. So um, a lot of what I do is a testament to her and just the discipline that she's helped instill in me and then, um, with the baby coming, I mean, it was, I probably, I think I started playing my best basketball as soon as he was born. Uh, I'm not sure how much that actually helped in the correlation, but, uh, just having him here was, I, know, I think it was fun just being able to have a baby in the house with us. Yeah, Darren, last year at this time, you were talking about how disappointed you were in your season and the need for accountability and a lot's changed over the last year. I'm curious for you, like what, what's been the biggest change for you individually, maybe, mentally, um, maybe off the floor, what, what changed? How do you change in the last year? I think, um, and even with that, going back to the other question, like having Rase here and um, obviously once Mike was hired and uh, she worked with Mike and Luke, um, that was, uh, I think, a big part of, a big part of, uh, of my development this year. And it's funny because Jordy was like, I don't think, he doesn't think that I got, you know, a lot better. But it was just the discipline and uh, having someone who pushed me and being held accountable uh, was a big reason and big part of, uh, of my success this year as an individual. De'Aaron, what's your big takeaway from these 89 games, be it what you can do, what this team can do, anything? Just what's, what's your big takeaway from, from this past season? Uh, the biggest takeaway, I think, is just, uh, just the consistency defensively that we – that we need to have. I think we were better defensively um, in the playoffs than we had been throughout the course of the season. But I think if we were better throughout the course of the season, we might have been even better defensively coming into the playoffs. So I think just taking that away, knowing that we can be a better defensive team, um, and I think that we showed it some nights and we didn't show it other nights, um, I think that's that's my biggest takeaway. Obviously, what we did offensively was great. Um, but I feel like, and obviously, you know, that's just from being around Mike. Um, the defensive side of the, ball, of the ball really takes precedent. De'Aaron, uh, Mr. Green, Draymond Green has a lot to say in the last 18 hours or so, but one of the things that he did say that he has respect for you, more respect for you, you know, since he done played in that series with you. Just want to uh, get your commentary on that and where your respect level is with him. Yeah, I mean, that's ultimate competitor, you know, when you step out there playing against the Warriors, you're going to get Draymond's best. You're probably going to get hit by Draymond. You're going to get yelled at by Draymond. Like, it's going to be a lot. And, uh, I mean, that's what he does. That's how he affects the games. You, you talk about players who you don't, you don't have to look at the stat sheet to know, how, know that they affected the game. He's one of those players. Um, and, I mean, he helps them in a variety of ways and help. I don't know if it was two games, but I know one game for sure. I think he had 21 on like eight for 10. So like um, he affected the game in scoring that way, but 
most most games he affects the game in other ways and uh, just a tremendous amount of respect for for him Steph Clay um, Jordan Poole okay, I, I met Jordan when he was a, I think I was a freshman in college he was a junior in high school um, and just seeing how 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 far a lot of guys have come um, like I said before playing that team was a blessing and a curse. Uh, but just the amount of respect I have for, for all of those players is I have a lot of respect for them. And I'm glad that they were able to teach us that lesson. Uh, Dear, now that it's all over, um, can you kind of give us the real deal on the finger? How much of a how much that bugged you and, and how much of a hindrance it was the rest of the series? I mean, it hurt a bit. But like I said before, the big part for me was just having my having um, the pad of my finger covered and just not being able to feel the ball. Um, but as far as pain, I was, I was fine with the, I was fine with the pain. Okay. And, um, what is your assessment as you guys go into this off season of, of like <clears throat> what you guys have, where you're good at, what, what you feel like maybe you might need going forward now that you've taken these steps? Um, I mean, that's not my job, uh, but for us, we, as a team just need to show that we can be more consistent, um, Obviously, the shooting was was one thing um, throughout the playoffs, but as a team, I mean, throughout the season, like we feel like we shot fine. Everybody has their nights where they're not going to shoot well, but uh, just as a team defense, like I said, defensively, we need to show more consistency on that end. Um, you don't want to be one of the bottom five teams in defense throughout a season and then just expect it to turn around in the playoffs. Even though we were better defensively during the playoffs, um, that's not kind of what was expected. So uh, we just need to show defensively that we that we can be a much better team dear and the, the Warriors in 13 and, and 14 had playoff runs that they've talked about that sort of helped them get over the hump in 2015 and, and win that championship and just you know you guys being sort of a younger team and maybe in a similar stage to where those Warriors were in 13 and 14 what do you think you can take from the series against them that you could potentially apply towards taking that next step into into contention yeah this could be like I said <clears throat> Uh, this is just a building block. You want to be one of those teams who, like the Warriors, lost to, I think, the Clippers was the last Western Conference team that they lost to. And then after that, like, that kind of just started the dynasty. And like I said, just being able to, you know, feel what the playoffs is like, you don't want to you don't want to go downhill. You were, We were able to play a team that just won a championship, you know, push them to seven games and kind of their experience. And to be quite frank, Steph showed us what it's like, what what it, what it takes to – to really get there, so uh, you you just want to take that and and run with it. You want to apply everything that they were able to do to us physically, um, mentally, as far as not having you know so many defensive lapses, and um, you want to build off of that. Fox, with the beam, the playoff crowds, the just the energy in the city, reuniting with Malik Monk, uh, so many different things that could be classified as a a special season. I'm just curious outside of the basketball element, how special was this career for you from almost like a narrative standpoint for just the year that you experienced? Oh, I think it was almost something out of a movie just with um, my life coming together like that. Uh, I definitely think it's year 25 for me is probably the best year that I've had in my life. Uh, and I mean, I just want to, I want to keep this, I want to keep this going. I want to keep this feeling going. I told, um, GA, one of our video guys, I'm like, this is, I don't know if I told y'all this yesterday, but I was like, this is probably the first time that the season ended and I'm like upset, you know, like uh, because of the way it ended and we felt like, you know, we were, we could have kept playing, we could have, you know, gotten to the second round and, you know, um, kept our season going. This is the first time that I actually felt like um, the season ending was kind of hurt for me. And uh, like I said, I, you want that sting to last a little bit so that you don't want to be able to, you don't want to feel that again. And I feel like that'll help you build towards the future. Um, when you, you mentioned a minute ago that like, you know, off season signings, trades, decisions are not your job, but I think I ask you every year, like, do you want to have a voice in that room? And it seems like this current executive staff has kind of brought you in a little bit in, in recent times to kind of bounce things off you or at least get your feedback. How comfortable are you in those decisions, like being able to have a voice there, and and do you want to be heard in in those circumstances? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm comfortable with it. Like you know, if they ask me, but I feel like for the most part, like we're on the same page. We usually know what we need. Um, 
mean, it's not rocket science how most teams are built, you know, in the NBA, especially with teams that are that went at a high level. It's not rocket science how they're built. Um, so whenever we do talk about it, uh, we're usually we're usually pretty much on the same page. Uh, two things for you. What first? What are some of your favorite like specific moments from this season that you feel like you're going to remember for a long time? Um, I feel like the Orlando game winner uh, definitely is 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 one, and um, the Clipper game. Like, I mean, those that's that's a game that's going to be remembered for not only for Clipper fans and Kings fans, but just basketball fans in general. Uh, that's going to be a game that's, that's probably always remembered. So I would say that's probably the biggest one. And then I don't know if it's too early, but do you already have an idea on what you as an individual want to work on throughout the course of this offseason? Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, it's obviously it's always going to remain the same. You know, be a more consistent shooter um, from three, from the free throw line. Um, getting stronger, being a being a better finisher at the rim, especially like do the playoffs. I don't think I finished at the rim at the rate that I usually did. Um, but shooting will always, I feel like for myself, will, will always be the top thing. Unless I start just shooting like Steph. And, uh, but yeah, that, that'll always be the top thing for me going in every offseason, I think. Dan, I was going to ask you, given this core and what you did this year, how excited you were for next year. But you saying that this is the first time the end of the season has kind of hurt and you were upset about it. I guess you can tie that in with that. How different of a feeling is that for you compared to your first five years in the, in the league? And, and how is that going to fuel you for next year? I've, honestly, I would say that's a better feeling. Like you want to, you want to end the season. Like if you didn't win, you want to end the season, like upset, like you didn't accomplish whatever it was that you wanted to accomplish. So, um, that's not a bad thing. Um, and you, like I said, you take that feeling and you build off of that feeling because you don't want to feel that again. And obviously, you're probably going to feel it again. Like, you're not going to win a championship every year. But I just feel like that helps you grow as a player. And if you have a lot of like-minded guys in the locker room, then that that fuels you guys as a team. So, um, like I said, we, we just we just build off of this. We, we take what we learn throughout the season. Uh, you be better. You take what you learn from a team who is a championship-level team. Um, you take the hurt that you felt and you become a better team. Fox, uh, we're getting Harrison just a sec. If this is the last time you played with Harrison, we don't know what's going to happen this summer with him as a free agent. Just how much has he meant to you as a mentor and a veteran in your locker room for the last four and a half years? HB's been big, man. From the moment that he that he got here, you just saw the professionalism that he had. Um, we've had our lockers next to each other since he's been here too. So um, – just the little lessons, and obviously it's it's a lot bigger than basketball for for, for HB. Um, knowing you know that he's a businessman, he um, he's a part of the the MBPA. So anytime there's a meeting, he lets us know. Um, he was huge for me and just showing me how I needed to work to get to the next level. So because when he got here, he had already won a championship. He had already played in two finals, uh, been in the playoff multiple times, and just seeing the way that he worked. Um, being here early, staying late, you know, whatever it may be, has made my work ethic that much better, um, which ultimately I feel like just, I feel like that's what has gotten me to this point and what a lot of people have seen. Uh, so if, obviously I don't know yet, but if, if it is, then, I mean, those, those are the life lessons that I feel like I've learned from HB since he's been here. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Uh, might see you guys in the city, might not.